How does knowledge of scaling aid a cook in the kitchen? A good cook intuitively knows that larger objects have less surface area per volume than smaller objects. He knows that less potato peelings result from peeling 5 kilograms of large potatoes than from peeling 5 kilograms of small potatoes. Here he's peeling a large potato. Smaller objects have more surface area per kilogram. The cook knows that thin french fries cook faster in oil than thicker french fries. And steel wool rusts away at the sink while steel knives rust more slowly. To see why this is so, let's pick up where we left off in our previous screencast. Recall how the cross-section area of scaled up things increases as the square of the increase. For example, the cross-section of the small cube is one square centimeter, and it's four square centimeters for the twice as big cube, and nine square centimeters for the three times as big cube. This increase in area by squaring the factor of increase applies also to the overall outer surface of things. This is better seen if we imagine the cubes are hollow boxes and we open them. Here we have the bottom of the smallest cube. The back side is open, then the two sides, then the front side, which is connected to the top. It's easy to see that the surface area is six square centimeters. Simply count them. Let's focus on the ratio of surface area to volume. The volume is one cubic centimeter. We see that the ratio of surface area to volume for this one centimeter cube is six in magnitude. The unit is inverse centimeters, which isn't important here because we're interested in how the surface area to volume ratio changes as we scale up the size of things. A word or two here about ratios. It's easy to focus on one thing at a time. Surface area, for example, describes the amount of surface. We're okay with that? And you probably also understand the concept of volume, which is the amount of space something occupies. It's more difficult, however, to think of both of these concepts at the same time. We put them together in a ratio where one quantity is placed in the numerator and the other in the denominator. And focusing on a ratio means focusing on two things at the same time, a part of one's learning experience. So let's continue with our cubes, comparing surface area to volume, which leads to some fascinating applications. Let's open up the two centimeter long cube. And we see much the same thing. The overall surface area is six times the cross section area. Since the cross section is four square centimeters, the total surface area, six times four is 24 square centimeters. Recall its volume is eight cubic centimeters. So far, so good? Let's look at the ratio of surface area to volume for this cube. Its ratio is 3, again in inverse centimeters. But the important thing is that it is less than the value of 6 for the smaller cube. There is less surface area per volume for the larger cube. And we look at the 3 by 3 by 3 centimeter cube. Again, we know that the total surface area is 6 times the cross-section area. So 6 times 9 equals 54 square centimeters. Recall that the volume is 27 cubic centimeters. What's the message? As an object increases in size, its amount of surface area increases by a smaller factor than the factor by which its volume or weight increases. Its surface-to-volume or surface-to-weight ratio decreases. Let's see how this applies to our pet dog, Bo. Little Bo grows and in time doubles in size. For the same proportion, at twice the size, Big Bo weighs eight times as much as before. But Big Bo has only four times more furry surface, only four times more skin. A big dog has less skin per body weight than smaller dogs. Heat transfer occurs at the surface of a creature at the skin. On a cold day, Big Bo is comfortable, but on a hot day, Little Bo is more comfortable. Time for a facts check. Consider the large amount of skin on this elephant. How does the amount of skin on an elephant compare with the amount of skin on a mouse? Which has more skin? A preschool child can correctly answer this question. The elephant, of course. 
Now consider this question. Which has more skin per body weight, an elephant or a mouse? Do you see this question is about a ratio? Not many preschoolers would answer this correctly. How about you? Did you say the mouse has more skin per body weight? I hope so, but that's correct. Compared to body weights, a mouse has more skin than an elephant. Smaller creatures have more skin compared with body weight than larger creatures. Let's consider how this relates to heat transfer. The elephant and mouse are warm-blooded creatures that lose body heat through the skin. Whereas an elephant, with a little surface area compared to its volume, eats relatively little, a mouse, with its enormous radiating area compared with its weight, eats a greater fraction of its own weight in food daily. The smaller the creature, the greater the proportion of food per body weight needed for adequate nourishment. The mouse doesn't fare well in cold climates. And an elephant doesn't fare well in hot climates. Compared with its huge size, it has relatively little surface area. How does nature come to its rescue? By giving it big ears. This is clearly shown in the photograph. The large ears significantly increase its overall radiating surface area, which facilitates cooling. How nice that nature compensates for the small ratio of surface area to volume for these large creatures. Let's consider very small creatures. At the microscopic level, many living cells obtain nourishment by diffusion through their surfaces. Scaling presents a problem with cell growth. For example, if the surface increases by 4, the corresponding volume increases by 8. Then 8 times as much mass must be sustained by only 4 times as much nourishment. At some size, the surface area doesn't allow sufficient nutrients to pass into the cell, placing a limit on how large cells can grow. So cells divide, as the top photo shows, where multiple divisions, A, B, and C, occur in the egg of a fertilized sea urchin embryo. The lower photo shows cell divisions in the liver, producing new cells to replace old, worn-out cells. So cells divide, and there is life as we know it. That's nice. And back to where we began, an example that's easy to remember. There's more skin on a kilogram of small potatoes than on a kilogram of large potatoes. So we learn that volume and area are not in direct proportion to each other. Changes in area mean centimeters squared, while changes in volume mean centimeters cubed. I want to leave you with a question. Which will cool a beverage faster, crushed ice or ice cubes of the same mass and temperature? Defend your answer. Until next time, good energy.